Hello Minecraft fans and fellow Christians. Today I'll be covering the mod Ice and Fire. It introduces several mystical and mythical creatures. The mod was named after this book series, but since I haven't read it I can't recommend it, so if there's something wrong with it, I'm sorry. But anyway, the mod seems pretty good to me at least. There's a few things I'm, yeah, could look a little better, but anyway. Now, to first introduce silver and silver armor. It deals extra damage against, well, undead. It seems as though werewolves and among other such things, well, this mod doesn't include werewolves, but anyway, don't like it. And with two silver or gold nuggets, you can craft these little things that you can walk on. And if there's enough gold, it'll make a special sound. You can craft silver armor, just like any other armor. And if you look at my upper left, you'll see that doesn't quite give as, as much as iron would, though. But anyway. Now, this mod introduces dragons, and that'll be the first thing I'll cover. You can actually craft a lectern and with three manuscript pages you can craft a bestiary book in which you can actually read a lot of lore and stories. Now it's story time. The part of the show where I come out and tell a story. This was a thing I started in the Twilight Forest, hence the picture and all. Now, as we go on, I'll be actually doing the, well, stories with the bestiary where I've already added all the manuscripts I can to this particular book. And it shows you a good deal about these creatures. You can click on any one of these and find out about it. A small tattered note clings to the binding of the bestiary. It reads, This manuscript is meant to be a guide to those who like to inform themselves about the greatest wonders in the supernatural realm. It will cover some of the basics of designing tools, armor, and weapons to tracking, hunting, and learning about mysterious creatures. The beastry then goes on to describe supernatural changes in a generation of the world, starting with strange ores. An ore with mystical properties, silver ore can be found at the same layers of gold can be found. It can be smelted into ingots which have a variety of uses. Silver weaponry does extra damage to the undead to its mystical properties. A second magical ore associated with the supernatural creatures is the sapphire ore. Sapphire ore is found to be randomly in snowy biomes and its drops can be traded with snow villagers. Nuggets of either gold or silver can be stored in placeable piles like so. The only way to obtain more information about the magical world is to research other writers' works. This can be done by crafting a lectern. Once a lectern has been placed, it can be interacted with by right-clicking on it. The inside will have three slots, the leftmost for the, an input bestiary, the bottom for the manuscripts, and the rightmost for putting Output bestiary. For every manuscript, a new index will appear in the bestiary. These new pages can be information about magical creatures, different types of peoples, informative crafting guides, and even basic alchemy. Now, sadly, I won't be able to get into all of this in one episode, but I'll start off with dragons. As soon as I can find the right page, ah, I'll start off with the fire dragon. The ice dragon page will be somewhat similar. 
Some of you may not want to purchase it right away. So the legends are true. Such beasts, such as the one in this entry focus on, do exist. Very well. I shall try as well as I can to describe such a beast and its activities. The appearance of the beast is obviously reptilian. However, it is much larger than the average reptile. Individuals I have seen range from the size of a pig to 25 blocks. There are even rumors of larger dragons sleeping in ancient crypts under the earth. Another notable feature they possess is the ability of flight. This is indicated by the development of large wings used in aviation. Although the beasts sleep seem sluggish at first, they can lift off and fly swiftly after prey. Perhaps the most dangerous aspect about them is their ability to produce fire from their mouths. They can use this power to cook their prey alive. Male dragons have patterned their wings and collect more valuable loot whereas female have carved horns. Simply creating fire is not the only way fire dragons dispatch their prey. They also have many different attacks. The dragon's fire blast attack fires a steady stream of flames from the beast's mouth. Younger dragons are less effective at this attack. While larger ones can scorch nearby terrain, inflicting massive amounts of damage. The fire blast isn't the only elemental attack. The dragon can also build up a blast of flames into a solidified block. This explosive fireball is then thrown toward the dragon's prey. Only older dragons are capable of this attack. One of the most common fire dragon attacks is the dragon's bite. This is the main attack of the fire dragon. It is powerful and quick, but it is not usually instantly deadly. However, the dragon has a rare melee attack, shaking its prey to death. In this attack, the dragon picks up its target in its mouth and rapidly shakes it in order to severely injure its prey. The dragon also has a final melee attack, in which it builds up a kinetic force in its tail to slam into its target. This attack is very effective, but it takes a while to build up. They can also beat their wings to push prey back. Taking down a dragon of any stage is not a very easy task. Since fire dragons use elemental ranged attacks, it would be smart to think of to use protective potions and long range weaponry. If you want to take down one of these beasts, try and avoid flames and watch for charge up behavior for many attacks. Once you've defeated one, you will have access to some valuable commodities. Another thing one should note about fire dragons is their different life stages. This is the youngest and it progresses in size and apparently different shades of red or other colors. Each stage in a dragon's life means different changes to their behavior and attacks. In the earliest stage, a dragon is unable to spout flames and is limited to biting attacks. Once it is in its second stage, it can breathe weak flames and do mild amounts of damage. The most notable development of the third stage is the gaining of the fire charge attack, which can deal large amounts of damage. Stage 3 dragons are also the most common type of dragons found in nature. Whereas stage 3 was the dragon's final teenage form, stage 4 is when a dragon is mature, a mature adult, capable of creating eggs. Stage 4 is generally more powerful and cannot be found in roosts. 
They occupy large caverns beneath the Earth's surface. Stage 5 produces a truly terrifying animal. They follow all the, the other ray rules of a stage 4 dragon, except much more powerful and deadly. They are incredibly rare, and it is unheard of for a single soul to defeat one. Both stage 4s and 5s can make deafening roars that instill fear on prey. Now I'm sure that many folks are crying out for me to, well, go fight one now. But I still have some things to cover. I'll go back to my island, though. As previously mentioned, there are two types of dragons, fire and ice. Sort of clued in by name, but anyway. I personally like the blue scales. And anything sort of blue or white, dra as far as dragons go, is sort of ice. Anything red, gray, bronze, or green, that is fire. And, well, as indicated by the book, the ice dragons pretty much spawn only in the icy biomes, which are indicated by a sort of giant plateau. And you may recall the something you mentioned about the horns indicating the gender of the dragons. This is a male dragon's skull, and this is a female one. You may look at the horns and see the differences for yourself. Now, one moment. If you're like me, you probably want something that can actually protect yourself from dragons. Now, I actually designed this to fit in an adult dragon, so that using the mob grinding utils mod, I can actually get spawn eggs of fire or ice dragons after combating one and getting DNA samples. I could push a but this button right here and Activate this redstone. Yeah, assuming that I had actually got the piston to operate right. But anyway, guess a slightly different design would work. Just a redstone ladder. But anyway, now let's say you're not like me and you don't want something like this, but you still want a protective bunker to keep you safe. Like, say, if you're going AFK or something. Now, luckily, by default, dragons will not spawn within a few chunks. Uh, let me check how many chunks. Okay, sorry, it wasn't a number of chunks per se, but rather a thousand block distance between you and the nearest dragon. Well, dragon den, technically, or roost depending on if it's on the surface or not. So, if there's, wherever you spawn, there's a thousand block safe radius zone where there aren't supposed to be dragon roosts. But let's say a dragon roost spawns 1,001 blocks away from you. The dragon from that roost can still come over a distance visible to you. And that, uh, it's just a weather change, one second. So don't always get comfortable in a particular spot from being safe for dragons unless it's you've been there for a while. Oh, one other thing. I almost forgot to mention. If you're going to build such a bunker as this, you need a distance of about five blocks in order to be sure that dragon can't reach you. The book was talking about its melee attacks, and those melee attacks can reach about five blocks. The what hitbox range is pretty close to that. It'll try to reach in there with you with its hands. Now, as you can see, you don't have to fill up the whole thing with obsidian. And water filling this whole thing up would actually help 
keep fires away. And one thing you could do is actually leave some blocks to be stone bricks. And when the dragon comes up and destroys the stone bricks, voila, it releases water that extinguishes its own flames. If that's what you so choose. But anyway. And, well, probably about the time you get that any dragons are nearby, you'll be able to kill by just repeatedly attacking them and getting killed and respawning and so forth. But anyway. Now we're finally going to get into the combat portion of this video. This is Scorched Stone. And, well, Scorched Scobble Cobblestone 2, which demarcates the, well, delineates where the dragon nest is. And that's the largest size of dragon, stage 5. It's asleep currently, so that means you could technically get the ambush shot. Well, surprise attack. If you don't do two things. One, step on its gold. It's real touchy about its gold. And second thing, don't touch your chest. It's as if about those two. Think sort of like uh, the dragon from The Hobbit, if you know what I'm talking about, from the book or movies. But anyway, now, charge! <laughs> That was the buying attack. You probably noticed the left shift to dismount. That was the buying attack that where it grabbed me. Yeah, looks like I need to wait up. I'm sure it'll be coming down to me sometime soon. It can destroy most blocks. It's trying to fly. Okay, one second. Going to creative mode. It ain't happy, to say the least. Okay, when it starts laying down like that, as if it were asleep, it's dead. And not to rise again. Okay, charred stone. Okay, I got the name wrong, but anyway. Well, that may have been with my arrows. Anyway. Now, after you win, if and when you do win, that is, You'll want to right click the buy with an empty hand. And you want to have several slots empty to do this. You'll probably remember that armor you saw on my island. These are dragon scales. You can craft that armor and blocks of that particular color scales with what you just right click from the skill, well, from the buy. Of that dragon. Now I'll head back to my island for some crafting recipes. Now as you can probably guess, you can place a skull like so by just right clicking on the ground. And hence go show your trophies off to your friends to sh say, oh I killed this size dragon and no I killed this size dragon. <laughs> Something like that. But anyway, another thing, you can actually see what stage Oh, okay, it looks like I got the size wrong on that, but anyway. Like I, well, I know I swore proed it before with that particular dragon, but take my word for it. When you're just starting off, that can still be real tough, especially if you don't have fire resistance yet. And another thing, you can technically eat the dragon flesh and heart but not only is it sort of disgusting with the heart, but eating either one will set you on fire for a few seconds. Now onto the crafting recipes. You can, here's the different kind of scales you can find. 
and you can craft these tools. A block of dragon bones takes nine. Sort of like a pure metal block, but anyway. Now, if you have a few balls and then kill a dragon, if you're willing to forgo, well, if you're willing to not get these two items, and you right-click the dragon with a ba few balls, you can get its blood to make these weapons. And, as you can tell, they do extra damage, y'all. But they also do extra damage against their opposite elemental dragon. And, I'll, another thing, you can craft bone weapons with wither bones. You have to kill with a skeleton for those. It's an extra drop now. But anyway. And a wither bone can create wither bone shards. And with that you can create dragon bone arrows. And dragon bone bows. Now another thing. The pick, axe, and shovel are a tier above diamond which means it can pick the obsidian levels type ores I believe or maybe even bet well no cobalt in tinkerous construct terms but anyway and let me see what's here okay never mind. the ice dragons have similar equivalents there okay now I'll have to go back to my mining dimension. One moment. The book also happened to mention the fact that you can get eggs from dragons. Now, well, eh, I guess I should go to back to story time. But there is one thing I should mention about the trap. Uh, let me take care of the weather a second. The reason why I did this particular pattern is that the fire dragons have a nasty habit of igniting obsidian. Like a flint and steel you might say. And the time I first created this as a prototype, the fire dragons, well, they created nether portals. A bunch of them. And that was rather irritating. So the best way to fix that is to have the first square part of this having no obsidian touching or at least not enough to create a portal however if you want to make certain the best way is just have an empty square the first row and I don't know have effectively a target pattern there if you so choose but anyway if you want me to read story time again then you can keep on watching, otherwise just skip ahead a bit. Welcome back to story time again. Now let's get on to the eggs. Fire dragon eggs for this time. After taking down one of the more monstrous fire dragons, I had found in a cavern. I noticed that the beast was guarding its own clutches of eggs. These eggs were a multitude of beautiful colors, all coated in shiny scales. I instantly thought of how much worth these eggs could be sold for, probably even more than many diamonds. However, eggs have one purpose to the dragon themselves, to propagate their own species. Remembering something I had read in some old manuscripts, that dragons have strong maternal instincts and care of their for year, their young. I set out to find out how to raise my own brood of dragons. While moving the eggs to a safer location near my home, I noticed that these eggs were much warmer than those of a chicken or other bird. This gave me an idea on how to unlock the secrets of the dragons. I stacked up some wood and netherrack into a large pile and place the large, largest of eggs onto it. Once the egg was atop the pile, I lit the pile afire, and the wood and netherrack around the egg burst into flames. 
After waiting around for a short time, I could not see any difference with the, the egg. I thought of removing the egg and looking for another method of hatching the egg, but I remembered that dragons are large beings that require a large amount of energy. Deciding not to be hasty, I let the dragon sit on the perpetual fire for three days. My decision was very successful. The dragon's eggs hatched and I am now in the possession of a young dragon. I'll have to write another entry some other time to describe my experience with my new friend. Now, there is also some other th entries that might be interesting to you. Tamed Dragons After hatching my very own dragon, I realized that the creature favored me as its parent. This creature wandered about aimlessly. However, it usually stayed in my general area. Since dragons are animals, they must require food. So I brought in a rabbit. First the dragon was reluctant to take any action, but soon tried to bite the rabbit. The feeble little dragon was barely able to take down the rabbit. So I decided to feed the bees a different way. I knew through down a slab of mutton and the dragon quickly raced towards it and consumed it. Dragons are ancient creatures and it must take a while for them to mature. However, I devised a plan to spur my dragon's growth faster. I did this by crafting dragon meal. This mix of bone and protein can be made with any meat. By feeding this to my dragon, I was able to make it grow rapidly. I noticed that I could interact with my dragon to check its progress. I can see how old it is, tell its gender, and see how hungry it is. Place a dragon skull on top of a stick has an entering, interesting effect on a tame dragon. By using on a dragon, you can make the beast stay or wander. By sneaking and interacting with a dragon that is over stage 2. We, one can mount the dragon and proceed to ride in the mare of a horse. By jumping one can make a dragon take off and fly. The beast can be made to descend its flight by sneaking. A dragon can breathe fire by the pressing of a certain command, which is different for many people. Adult dragons can be bred by feeding them a mixture of elemental items, but first these items must be gathered. Fire lilies and frost lilies are used to make fire mixture and frost mixture, respectively. This mixture can be used to breed to tamed dragons. By interacting with a male dragon with the substance, then interacting with a female dragon will result in the two breeding. Once the dragons have finished mating, the female will lay a single egg of any color. Dragon horns can be used to summon and desummon dragons. One can desummon a dragon by interacting with it with a horn and blowing a horn can summon one. Armor for dragons can also be crafted. It is most commonly made from iron, gold, and diamond. Dragon armor is made in the same shape of a normal armor, except it uses blocks instead of ingots. One can also skillfully craft a dragon bone flute out of iron and dragon bone. This instrument can calm a tame fly dragon and bring it towards the ground. These foods are also effective on other flying tamed creatures, like hippogriffs and amphitheaters. amphitheaters. Now, hopefully that revealed at least some of the things that might be interesting. Now I'll put this back and head back to where we were. Now like the character or forgotten explorer you might want to call him, you can set the dragon egg on sore on fire here 
but for an ice dragon, you simply put it in water. It can be one piece of netherrack or just one piece of wire. Well, for an ice dragon, I would have thought ice blocks or something, but that's me, at the very least. Now, as a dragon meal, you can sort of mass produce it like so. I used the chickens mod to, well, mass produce chickens that were these chicken breeders. And from Ancient Warfare, and I have these farms. And from Galacticraft, the coal generators. More chickens providing coal, and so forth. And I use mob grinding utils to get a bunch of bones. And, well, I actually at first thought I needed a ton of these, but turns out I needed less than a stack to actually get a dragon full grown. Now, just to cover some crafting recipes and the different kinds of eggs. Here's the dragon horn. Like the book said, you can just right click on dragon and he'll be put in the horn. How? I don't ask me based on the size, but anyway. Dragon bones and the dragon flute. They'll call the dragon to you. So like a dog whistle, but anyway. And the command staff to make him stand up and wander or sit down. Now, another thing you can do is use a dragon to actually make a dragon forge. Oh, I'll need the crafting recipes one second. Now this is a dragon steel forge. You use dragon blood, ice or fire. Well, ice goes in the, its own dragon forge, but anyway. And you need fire for a dragon fire one and iron. You craft at least seven, at least seventeen. You're probably going to, have to craft twenty something total, so you can craft the architecture, if I'm saying it right, and the dragon's fire core. You'll need a heart for this, but anyway, which seems a little heartless if you think about it. But anyway, and for a dragon forge ice. Well, Ice Dragon Forge, it'll craft it like so. As long as you use Fire Dragon Scales, you get Dragon Fire Forge, and an Ice Dragon Fire Core, well, Forge, sorry, getting a little mixed up. Okay. And this is what Fire Dragon Steel looks like, and then you got Ice Dragon Steel. Now, since I've been talking about it, I might as well go ahead and hatch a dragon egg. Now, it'll take some time, but if you look closely, you can see the egg. You can see the egg just sort of vibrating around there. It'll be considered an entity, so technically if you accidentally punch it or something along those lines, that'll hurt it. And as to picking it up again, eh, right clicking doesn't work. I'm sorry, I'm out of ideas for picking up again. So you may want to create a small protected area for it. Maybe an obscene area with some, with an iron door and button or something. It the dragon itself will be one a the size of a block so just about anything you start off with will do but anyway now let's say you actually want to capture an untamed dragon you can create some iron nuggets chain links and then an actual chain wait a second is that what it's actually called oh well okay iron chain but anyway you can also add slime, but anyway, 
No. I don't think it was three full days, or at least not real life days, for our dragon to hatch. Maybe three game days. But in any case, it still takes a little while to hatch. You know, last time I hatched one, it didn't seem like three game days. But anyway. Now, I'll just go ahead and stop the recording here until the dragon hatches or so. Oh, huh? <laughs> oh there you are, little guy. If you shift right click, yeah, you can see his uh, his stats. Sally, for some reason, I never could figure out how to name them. I guess he just used a name tag. Now, as you can see, he's just wandering around. Right click in him will do that. He seems so cute. <laughs> <laughs> it, his parent wasn't so cute, but anyway. Now, let's say I want him to stay cute like that. I could stunt his growth or he permanently looks like that or something like that. But that just seems mean to me, but anyway. Eh, there. He can actually get on my shoulder. Shoulder. A shoulder dragon. <laughs> Imagine that. Now let's say I wind him down. Okay. Let's see. Hey, you. Get down. Okay. I just... Okay. Okay. I had a... I'm not even sure how I did it in the first place. Okay. Okay, somehow I got him to stay on my shoulder while he was wandering. But anyway, I, and then I shift right click to get him off. Okay, and then shift right click to set his home. Now let's say I'm letting him wander. Maybe when he's older, more be it. <laughs> okay. Now, for the sake of you being able to know how much it takes, I'll take this into survival mode. Come on, little... Yeah. Let's just call him Timmy for now. Hey, Timmy. Okay, let's just see Dragon Horn for now. He's going to get big. And now, I, as you can probably tell, the dragon horn moved. And now I had to right click and hold, and voila. Now, let's tell him to stay, and I feed him. As you can probably tell, his health is increasing. Well, not yet, anyway, but anyway. Oh, wait, it is increasing. My thing just wasn't. Okay, let's check his stats. Oh, his health should be increasing. Okay, stage three still. Ooh. I ran out of that meal, dragon meal. Apparently took more than I thought. Let me go get some more. The last time I did this, it took smaller amount. That's why. Oh, he's holding his mouth open because he's hungry. His health should be increasing. I think. Oh, whoops. I think little Timmy isn't so little anymore. His hitbox is somewhat closer to him, apparently. Now he's a male dragon. He's full right now. His hunger is at 100. Stage 5. When he's at stage 5, you can't really get him to grow anymore. 
Now let's get to forging. You can start his fire attack by pressing R. You have to hold it for a while. Okay, I'll skip ahead some. Now after some fire removal. Voila. We get one fire dragon steel. And yeah, it takes a while. A long while to get just one fire steel ingot. Now as you can tell, there is some spillover. All right. Oh, dash it all. I forgot to show you how to make this. Okay. Pardon me, my memory. I'll go into creative mode. Okay. Now the ice dragon forge is made in a similar way. Oops. Here for the ice dragon forge, you would just use as ice counterparts. The core has to go here. The architecture here. And the rest. Oh, oops. Oh, it's active. I thought it would have taken this to finish it, but anyway. That dragon war will actually give you strength occasionally. And you put the dragon blood here and the iron here. It has to be iron and fire dragon blood. But once you get enough, you could technically use some other methods to mass produce it. Like say the ba bacteria mod and so forth. But anyway. Now, even at his size, I can still use the horn. Although since I'm in crave mode, it just created another horn. With Timmy in there. But anyway, now as to the Dragon Forge, well, oh, I forgot to give the dimensions for this. My memory seems to be off today. Now, let me get the dimensions in my memory. The thing is 34 by 34 length and width, and then the height is... Okay, let me turn the volume down. Don't know why that was going on, but anyway, I better just type out the measurements. The width is 34, length 34, height 11. Now this is rather a spacious design, so technically you could downsize it a bit if you wanted to save up on resources and not mine so much obsidian. But anyway, now the reason now I created this little part out here outside the trap for reasons such as fire breath. The fire breath can and well no the fire breath is still trapped by it's still physical attacks that can reach outside the trap and to a degree underneath it. So unless you don't mind the damage a well if you don't mind the damage you can just downsize it maybe a little even even more. But anyway now, that seems to be it, folks. Until next time, I hope you all like this. Bye.